the kinds of questions you face about Islam are of every variety. Why do you guys believe this? Why do you guys do that? Is it true in Islam there's this or that or the other? And there's no end to these things. The jihad questions or Islam and its relationship with women or Islam and pluralism and our acceptance of other world views or the exclusivity of Islam in the afterlife and all kinds of things, right? And you get asked about these things from a humanist point of view, from a moral point of view. How can you believe these things in the modern world? And you know, how, how is this supposed to be a tolerant religion? I mean, you call it peace, but then you say this, this, this and this, right? So you're bombarded with that kind of stuff all the time. What Allah Azza wa does with questions. By the way, the Quran does record condescending questions too. It does record people that ask questions for the wrong reasons also and teaches us how to deal with that as well. Allah does do that as well. There are root questions and there are branch questions. That's obviously the imagery of a tree, isn't it? You know, let's say every time you address a branch question, you've cut off that branch. The thing about a branch is when you cut it off, another one will grow in its place. And maybe two will grow in its place. You cut off and chop off another branch, another two or three will grow in its place. You'll have a conversation with someone about how Islam mistreats women. You can have that conversation for four or five hours, it's going to lead to a question about slavery, which is going to lead to a question about jihad, which is going to lead to a question about Islam and politics, and it's going to keep going. And about six hours in, you're going to come back to Islam and women. You're like, didn't we just do that one? You're going to come back in circles and circles and circles and circles, and they're not going to end. Somebody thinks, well, you know, here are the hundred questions that are being asked about Islam. If we can just answer these questions, we're good. Then the problem is solved. From my own understanding of the Qur'an, Allah knows best, a lot of these questions are actually branch questions. They address one bit of the problem, but they don't address the root of the problem. Yes, these questions do have answers, but answering them before you deal with the root of the problem is pointless. Not that these questions don't deserve answers, they do. But the thing is, there's a deeper problem here. The Qur'an concerns itself primarily with the root questions. And the root questions most people don't ask. It's a long list of questions, some of them may be the fundamental core or root questions, a lot of them are branch questions and they're all mixed in together. What are some of those root questions? Like, is there really a God? Is this really revelation from God? Is, is Muhammad really a messenger of God? He speaks on behalf of the creator of all things. An angel really did descend on him and gave him this message. This is what you actually believe and what's your basis for believing that? You guys actually do believe that once you die, that life carries on? Our bodies are decayed, they're turning into dirt. The thing that made up our bodies has now mixed in with the elements of the earth. Insects and all kinds of microbes have had their way with us. And we're deteriorated to a point, this piece of grass right here may have been a grave, but when you dig it now, a thousand years later, there's nothing to be found nothing but dirt. And you're saying that we're going to come back from all of this, restored entirely. And then on top of that, there's a new kind of life where there's no aging, there's eternity, and you get to live forever. And there's a kind of fire that burns but doesn't kill. And it's much hotter than this fire. This is the stuff you guys believe. This is what you actually, you're convinced of this, absolutely convinced of this. You know what these are? These are fundamental questions. They boil down to three things. They boil down to questions about God, about Allah, about the message itself, Risala, the entire institution of revelation, and a life after death. Whether we're talking about the life in the grave, or judgment day, or hell, or heaven, doesn't matter, it's another life, another life beyond this one. The Qur'an concerns itself with these three, Allah, Risala, Akhirah. When you answer these questions to the satisfaction of a human soul, someone's internalized that these are actual realities. This is in fact revelation. I am convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt. I am content in the depth of my heart that this is in fact the Word of God. Then those other questions, you may still have them. But when you receive their answers, you'll actually be satisfied. You'll actually be content. And another incredible thing will happen. There are some questions to which you will never find answers. Because He knows everything and you don't. And you've accepted that already. So you'll ask, what does Alif Lam Mim mean? You'll be given the answer, Allah knows and I don't. You won't have a problem saying, I can't accept that, I'm, that's not good enough for me, I need to know everything. That's not going to be a problem anymore, because you've accepted a higher authority. You've accepted a divine source. Allah Azza wa Jalla in this ayah is saying, are you going to question your messenger in a way that indicates that you have a problem with the roots? What is the root? Iman. What is Iman? Iman Billah, Iman Bil Risala, Iman Bil 
Akhirah. Look at this ayah again. Are you intending to ask your messenger the way Musa was asked before? Am tuliduna an tas'alu rasulakum kama su'ila Musa min qabl. Wa man yatabaddal al-kufra bil-iman faqad dalla sawa as-sabil. Whoever were to replace faith with disbelief. So the questions go back to what matters of faith. Actual matters of faith. Now a lot of times, for example, there are Muslims that really have some deep questions. Maybe they were asked by non-Muslims or they started thinking about them themselves and maybe they have questions like, Allah is way too harsh. The God of the Qur'an is really, really harsh. Why is He going to punish people forever in hell? Or Why are hands being chopped and people being stoned? And That stuff seems barbaric. How can that stuff be in the modern world, etc.? These are questions you might have, but you're scared to ask your mom because she'll have heart palpitations and then she'll start reciting Qur'an on you and like, you know, force you to go to Umrah with her and, you know. <laughs> or if you were to ask your father or your cousin or your brother, like, Astaghfirullah, what are you saying, bro? You need to watch this video. So that, that happens, right? So you don't actually ask, you keep it inside. A lot of people actually have questions about their faith. They haven't heard satisfactory answers about the fundamentals of their faith. Why are they believers to begin with? They have those questions, but we've created a culture in which you cannot ask, you cannot engage those questions, you cannot arrive at a satisfactory answer, because we have made these questions into taboo. And as a result of that, a lot of people walk around with doubt. The outside looks like they're Muslim, they're praying, they're, they're coming to Eid prayer at least. But on the inside, there are these questions that are just unanswered. And sometimes they just come out. Because you can't only keep these things inside for so long. And then at some party or some gathering, they just pour out. And then you're like, what? Where did you? How could you say these things? I never knew you were like a closet kafir or something. You know, like, 